So we're going to do this in section 3.3.1 at the top, and we're going to look at the three log laws. Now, I know you've learned these before in Frank's class, um, but it's going to be important to see why they operate the way they do. I know you've recognized the patterns, but it's kind of cool to see um, how the math works beneath it. So we're going to kind of create a table. Um, we're going to look at the name of the law. And then you might remember these terms from Frank's class. We are going to learn how to condense. We're going to learn the condensed form. And then we're going to learn the expanded form. And this will go at the top, expanded form. So we're going to look at both forms. All right, so our first one we dealt with problem 97. And we call that law or that property the product property. Condensed means what? To make bigger or smaller? smaller. Yeah, it means to make smaller. So the condensed form for product is log base B of X times Y. It's the smallest the form can get. And the expanded form of this is what they originally gave you in this problem, which was, I think it was log of 2 plus log of 3, right? What did that equal? Uh, log, of log of 6, right? You weren't adding, you were actually just multiplying. So there's a relationship here between addition and multiplication. And we'll talk about why that is in a sec. Okay, so that's our first form. That was 97. Now let's move to 100. What was the name of the second property? Do you want to take a take a guess? It's another word for division. It starts with a Q. Quotient. <laughs> yeah, not many words that start with a Q. Quotient property. And the condensed form of this is log base b of x divided by y. And now I want you to try to write the expanded form. All right, Jeff, what's the expanded form? Log base b of x, y. Log base b of x. Times log. Uh, we're not multiplying here. Oh, subtracting. subtracting. Log base b of y. Okay. Now, if we stop here and look at this, there is no coincidence that this is operating like it is. What rules does this look like it's following? exponents. <coughs> and why would it follow exponent rules? What's the relationship between exponents and logs? They are inverses. Um, if we go back to this, and you don't need to write this down, x of a plus b equals x of a times x of b. Remember doing this? I kind of drilled this in your head. Rules of uh, exponents, right? Isn't the exact same thing as the product property? And it's because these are inverses of each other. And the inverse is the only, only thing that's happening is the x and y is, are switching. They're following the same rules. What's the last property here? Power, Power property. So the last property will be the power. And the power looks like this. Log base b of x, and we'll use n. And what do I do with this n? In the expanded form, where do I move it? Yeah, I'm going to move it right to the front. So the expanded form is going to come right up to the front. Now, for this concept, it, we are going to be moving in between condensed and expanded form, or we can move between expanded and condensed. I'm not going to have you move back and forth. I'm just going to have you move one direction or the other. Um, this is a tool that allows us to do um, bigger things. Right? Let's do an example at the bottom, and we're going to do one um, expansion, and then we'll do a couple condensing problems. All right, so we are going to expand. Log base 2 
of x, y to the negative 3. Okay, now you don't need to number these. I'm going to number them for voting's sake. 1, 2, and 3. What I want you to do is talk to your group. You need to make this bigger, expand it out. So I want you to talk to your group which properties you're going to use, but the higher level question, what order are you going to use it in? Which one are you going to do first, and which one are you going to do second? All right, so take about 30 seconds to do that. So you're using opposite. So we're going to use product to split it up first. All right, after you split them up, what's the next move? What are you going to do now? Power. Now, can you guys see now that the negative 3 is only on the Y? Yep. It's not to both, right? All right, so then go ahead and move that negative 3. All right, Daniel, what did you get for your, after you used power on this? After I used power. Oh, yeah, I got log 2 uh -huh. plus 3 log 1. Oh, sorry, log 2x. Okay. Did you get plus or minus? Minus. Okay. So the negative comes to the front. You can see that this negative 3 we've brought to the front. Can you rewrite, could you rewrite this as plus a negative? You could rewrite it as plus a negative, but aren't, isn't this the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Can I go any farther? Can I make it any bigger? Or am I done? I'm all done. Yeah, Karen, question. Why wouldn't the negative 3 go in front of the log 2x? Um, be, that's a good question. The negative 3 is only on the y. Okay. Um, if there was parentheses around it and it was applied to both, then it would be on both of them. Okay. Now, I think condensing is harder for students. Um, so we're going to do a couple examples on condensing. Condense or simplify. All right. Warning, this is going to look a little ugly. Don't freak out. For natural log, x squared, y cubed, minus 3 natural log, y cubed, z. And Jeff, there's my z. Uh, Okay, so same thing again. Yeah, Jonathan? I just have a, like, a really common question. Like, for a squared and cubed, like, why don't we use the actual like, square and a cube? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, because you could think if we got up to like the 17th or 18th power, you'd be drawing something with like 19 sides. <laughs> um, but you, but you want to know, actually, this is tangential. I'm going to pause it. You want to know why we use squared and cubed? Yeah. Okay. Quick lesson. Two. Okay. This is what shape is this? It's 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 not a cube. It's two dimensional, and it's a square, right? X times x, right? This would be x squared, right? This is squared, right? Two dimensions. All right. This is a cube. How do you find the volume of a cube? <laughs> no, no, not my hand, right? Yeah, x cubed, right? So the volume of this is x cubed. The area of this is x squared, right? So squared we are dealing in the two-dimensional world. Flat plane, x and y axis. Cube means you're dealing in the three-dimensional world. All of a sudden, you have a two-dimensional plane, and you've popped it out and made a third dimension mm -hmm. to create some sort of volume or space to fill up. Well, so does that mean that, like, if you get into, like... So yeah. then you take something to the fourth power. Yeah. Oh, it's like you're in the fourth dimension, and, like, quantum physics and stuff deals with that. Fourth dimension. Well, that's that is real life. Like, that is, it's, 
I'm playing a joke before you said that. I was like, I'm working in the fourth dimension. Like, oh, yeah, and there's like the fourth dimension. No, they, they, like, they've looked into the fourth dimension. You know, it's uh, black holes and things like that. Oh, yes. Why is she laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah. Did that, did that kind of answer your question in a direct way? Yeah. Um, an art major. All right, guys. Why don't you guys talk to your group? Which properties are you going to use in which order? You need to make it smaller. Condense it. Oh, natural log. Don't freak out with ln. Just it's log base e. Yeah. So for the exponents, when we move forward with the product, do we multiply them together or plus them together? Um, what was your question? Do you multiply them together? Like, see how there are exponents on the x and the y. Yeah. For using the product method, are we moving them? Do we multiply them together? Oh, no, you're going to want to move use the power first, actually, okay. to move them. All right, raise your hand if you want to use product first. Quotient? What about power? Or did you guys even talk about this? Jonathan, executive order, let's use power. All right, let's go ahead and use power. I'm going to do this one with you, but the next one is all you. Now, some of you, when you move this, the four is going to be no problem. Yeah, so some of you are going to want to move the negative three. I, I kind of tell, I'd kind of rather have you not do it. Leave it minus. You'll see why it's a better move to just move the three. Because if you just move the three, you're not dealing with the negative exponent, right? And then the next move is what? What's the next move? Quotient. No, go ahead and use quotient. Use the quotient property. Use the quotient. Be careful with all these exponents. All right, now we get here with the quotient. Can you go farther? Do you see some like terms? Yes. What letter? Y. Y, all right? I want you to deal with this 4 and this 3. Go ahead, combine. We'll distribute that, and then combine your like terms. See how simple you can get. Okay. All right, so we get x8, y12, y9, z3. All right, how many y's do I have left? Three, where are they? You got it. Yeah, Jeff? When do you, like, that's the, that's the part I get confused. Like, when do you know when you move the like, exponent on the outside of the vertices? Like, when to, like, add them? Oh, good question. Um, and this can go on the bottom if you, you guys should still have room down there. One more condensing. All right, so condense. And try this one all by yourself. Log of y minus 2 log of y plus 2 log of z. This is really expanded out. Um, and here is my kind of hint to you on this. If you look back at our last problem, and I know you're still copying this down, it's fine. Final answer here. This part ended up on the bottom, right? This part ended up on the top. And the reason it was is because what's the sign in front of the 4? It's a positive. Apply the same concept. Positive exponents will always be on top. Negative will be on the bottom. You think about it here, what's going to go on top then? These two, right? And this will be the only term that goes on the bottom. Okay, that's an easier way to think about it. Try doing this one on your own. Yeah. We get, what, what property did you guys use first? Quotient? Did anybody use power? Yeah, power. 
Okay, log y one third times log, oops, actually minus log y squared plus log z squared. So then this final form, y one third z squared over y squared. All right, so this is good. If you can, uh, no, the negative means it's on the bottom. So if we're this far, if you can get this far, this is a three, not a four, because you can go farther with these y's, right? Why can't we combine them the way they are, though? It's the fraction. Fraction. How can I make the fractions the same? It's the fraction. Yes. What am I going to multiply this two by? Three. Not just three. Three over. Three. Guessing. Three over three. Because it's the same as 1, right? Doesn't change the value. So go ahead and multiply 3 over 3 times 2. y to the 1 third z squared over y 6 to the 3. And this is why that's such a good tool. Now we look at it. The denominators are the same, right? Now we can just think of it conceptually. I have 1 y at the top, 6 on the bottom. How many do I have left? Five. Five, where are they? On the bottom. Go ahead and write it. It's way easier than memorizing exponent rules. So log of z squared over y, five over three. There it is. Okay. Uh, cool. Question.